Okay, now we're down in the workshop. We will go through uh, taking all of the, the components, taking inventory, making sure that the kit has everything that we need. And once we do that, we'll start the, the build process of our Songcraft Mini Manatee. Um, we see here we've got the, the two foam pieces. Um, the, the two are slightly different, but you'll see as they, they line up, they're mirror images of some parts. Um, all the, the pieces are held in with tabs, so there shouldn't be any loose foam pieces kicking around your package. We've got our long carbon spar. We have our shorter carbon control rods. We have our shrink tube, short pieces of straight wire, and short micro control Z-bends. Uh, four laser cut micro control horns. We've got three genuine Dubro mini easy links and our plywood firewall specifically for the Mini Manatee. Um, that's all the pieces that are going to be in the kit. Um, what you'll also need to complete your, your flying Manatee is uh, your, your motor, your speed control, two servos, um, songcraft.com you can get the mini completer kit that includes your motor your two servos those are 3.6 gram servos a DSM2 compatible six channel receiver six amp brushless speed control your prop and three pairs of two millimeter bullet connectors so with the mini, mini manatee kit and the mini electronics completion kit, it's going to be all the parts that you need, uh, with the exception of a 300 to 400 milliamp two cell lipo battery to power your model. Um, with all of that together, um, there's just a couple things that you know might make your model look a little bit nicer that that we recommend. Um, for finishing, you see the, the models that we have on the website as displayed and, and the ones that we fly. Uh, we use a colored packing tape. Uh, not only does it give a nice glossy finish, but it, it adds a significant amount of strength and stiffness to the, the foam and real uh, impact durability. Um, but, you know, it, it, it looks great. Uh, we find that with the, the good looks and you know, since this is a combat type airplane you're probably going to take some hits so so you're going to want to pick up some packing tape of the colors that you choose. Um, today we're using the, the yellow and black. Um, again Songcraft offers uh, a wide array of colored packing tape that you can choose from. Um, other products that, that we have that we suggest to use is 3M Blenderm hinge tape. Uh, we just have the one inch. Um, and then for gluing the pieces together, Beacon Foam Tack. It, it really is the, the superior foam glue. It's safe for pretty much every foam that we've run into and it's extremely lightweight when it cures so that, that really is the, the best choice. Um, you know, other things that you're probably going to be able to uh, already have in your toolbox, uh, just regular clear packaging tape. We're going to need a nice straight edge. Uh, we have a little single edge razor blade. You'll need your hobby knife, maybe a pair of scissors, um, some sandpaper. We've got a little 200 grit on a paint stirrer stick, and then also a, a foam sanding block. We, we like that for rounding the edges. Um, for shrinking the shrink tube, you'll need a heat gun and soldering, you'll need all your soldering equipment. Um, so with that, we should get going. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our hobby knife and we're going to carefully cut all of the foam holding tabs that are holding the pieces into the, the skeleton. So, you know, there every once in a while, it just doesn't need a lot of force. The tabs are not all the way through. 
Um, so you know, they, they just need a little bit of a, a nick, and you'll get them cut right up. The foam pieces will, will slide right out. you find you get some resistance when you think that you have all the tabs cut, just check one more time. Uh, even after all the ones that, that we've built, we still miss a tab or two when we're cutting. And you can just toss the, the skeleton, save it. You never know, you might need some little pieces, but we're just going to toss that over to the side. Okay, now that we've got all of our foam parts cut out, we can take kind of a, a moment to, to explain what each of them are. So we, we have our two main wing halves. Those will fit together just like that. We have our two KF step halves. Again, they've got the nice locating notch, so it'll only go in one spot. Don't have to worry about that. We have our two vertical stabilizers, two ailerons, two winglets that are going to give a little bit of a, a unique shape to the, the back of the vertical stabilizers. We have our battery tray, pair of fuselage sides, our fuselage bottom, and our elevator. Um, at this time, we can uh, if you see any edges that are rough or you have a little bit of the tab still remaining uh, from where you cut it, you can take your sanding block and, and sand those off and just lightly sand. It doesn't take much to, to sand the foam smooth. Um, it also is a good time that we can take our plywood firewall. Uh, sometimes we'll see a little bit of a, you know, just some fuzzy kind of from the, the CNC cutting process. We could just hit that with the, the sandpaper a little bit just to knock the edges down, make them a little more smooth. Uh, once we've done that, we can go on, we'll put the, the parts aside that we're not going to need, and we will uh, start gluing the, the two wing halves together. Okay, so now we've cleared our workshop, or our workbench, we have our two halves of our main wing, our two halves of our KF step. Um, the KF step is the same top and bottom, so we don't have to worry about that, but the main wing has a groove you'll see machined into it. 
Um, in this groove, our carbon spar is going to, to be glued into. Um, you see on this side, the groove is there. On the bottom side, you can't see that. When the model's all complete, the spar will be completely hidden, uh, so it'll be a nice finish. So just make note that you need to have the groove facing up so you can work on it. Um, so we're going to take our beacon foam tack on one side, just apply a, a thin bead of glue on all the surfaces that are contacting each other. Note we've got the two notches that the servos will sit in. We don't need to put glue in those. Those of you that haven't used foam tack before, um, kind of one of the, the techniques to this glue is, I mean, oh, it, it works like uh, many of the foam glues in that it, it doesn't attack the foam, but it's unique in that it, it set, has a little bit of a longer working time. So one thing to speed up the working time, to kind of air it out. So we see I applied the glue, I stuck the pieces together, and I pull them apart, it kind of helps to flash off the, the solvent that's in the foam, or in the foam tack. So we've got some strings going on in, in the foam. That, that really means that the, the glue is activating. So what we want to do once we, we get that, we're going to put on a nice flat surface. Gonna push the two pieces together, make sure that they're nicely lined up. Wipe any glue that may have come off the top, top and bottom. And then we let that set. Really working time, probably five minutes or so of wait, and this will be ready to go. Uh, you know, the, the glue joint will be stronger than, than the foam itself, so we won't have to worry about that failing. Uh, we'll just repeat the same process with the KF step. Press it together, let it air out a little bit. About about three times of pressing it together, let it air out. It gets the, the strings, I don't know how well you can see that, but once we get those strings going, put it flat on the table, press it together, see that the joint almost even disappears, so that's gonna give us a, a nice finish. So we'll set that aside to let that cure and we'll move on to prepping the control surfaces. So we've got our two ailerons, we've got our rudder, not a rudder, our elevator. So what we're going to need to do with these is we're going to have to, to use our ruler and our razor blade. We're going to cut a 45 degree bevel into the leading edge of the surface so that we, we give it the uh, freedom to, to flex. So since the ailerons are, are quite a unique shape, um, we want to make sure that we have them oriented in a mirror image of each other so that we don't cut the bevel on the wrong side. So what we find really is the easiest thing to do is you know, line it up and we can even take our our fuselage at, or our main wing as it's going. And we can see how the finished model, the ailerons will, will line up like this. We want the elevator to have the control, the slot that's cut into it for the control horn. That's going to be on the left hand side as we're facing the airplane like this. So uh, I think probably in the, in the video, it's going to be mirrored, but as you're facing the model with it facing forward, you want that slot on the left. So this is the, the right way that we want them oriented so that there's no confusion. So we're going to cut the bevel on the bottom side. So all three of these parts, we're just going to, to flip over like this. And then we like to use the, the edge of the table 
kind of helps to, to get a little bit more room. Get to the edge of the table, get some room, get your knife. We're just going to cut that 45 degree bevel. Nice sharp razor. Don't have any pulling. Makes a nice clean bevel. And we'll repeat the same for both of the ailerons. There we go. If you're not quite happy with the way that the bevel came out, it's no problem if, if you need to, to hit it with a little sand just to, to clean it up to give you that, that straight edge. But there we have it. We have our beveled surfaces and those are looking really nice. So we can set those aside until we're ready to install them onto the main wing um, once that glue dries. So we'll come back in a, in a moment. Okay, so we're back. The glue has cured on our main wing seam. So that's got a, a nice joint. That's one solid, nice flat piece. So we're going to add the control surfaces to the main wing. Um, everything, it, it builds very nice when you keep all the parts uh, that are going to be flat uh, together and you, you'll see as we go with the build we're going to keep you know, the, the main wing everything will be flat and then at the very end the parts that add the, the depth to the model we're going to, to add those on. So now we're going to take our blender hinge tape uh, our control surfaces that we've beveled in the last step we'll just kind of line them up just by eye just to, to make sure that everything looks right. Um, the ailerons you'll be able to line them up with the curve of the, the main wing into the aileron. Uh, there's plenty of room on the inside, so there, there should be no issues with uh, contacting the main wing on the deflection. Uh, with the elevator, since it really could go in either direction, but with our bevel, it locks in the, the direction we're going. We've machined a very small notch perfectly in the center of the surface. That centered notch will line up with that seam of the, the two halves of the wing. Since that's right down the center, it'll be a perfect alignment and you won't have any issues once we install the, the vertical stabilizers. So we'll just get a little piece of blender we like to use the, all the tools that we have, and the table's a, a nice tool to stick things to. So we take maybe about a three quarter inch wide piece of blender and tape. We're going to start in the elevator first. Um, for this one, we're going to use three pieces of hinge tape. We use one on either side. Let me just stick that down. One on the other side. And then one right in the middle. Notice that this probably covers up the slot for the control horn to go into. Just use your hobby knife. Just cut that. That's not going to be a problem at all. So we see we've got lots of flexibility there. It's a nice strong hinge. That's the way to go. Very lightweight. We'll repeat the same process with the ailerons.
we're only going to put two pieces on the ailerons. We can see we've got our control surfaces are all firmly attached. We've got plenty of deflection in either direction. If you find that there's a little bit of bind um, in one direction or the other, it's not a problem again. Take your sandpaper and just, just sand a little bit down to make that surface nice and free. So with our control surfaces installed, our main wing and our KF step are now cured. The glue is bound the, the two halves together. We can go ahead and install our carbon spar and then put our KF step on top of it. We have our, it's a 16 inch, their carbon rod or carbon tube, and we'll note that just dry fit, this fits into the, the slot perfectly. And there's a nice, still flush surface, and we, when we add the glue, that's going to lock that spar in there. And you're going to have a nice stiff wing. It'll stay very straight through all the, the different maneuvers that you'll put it on. So again, we'll take our foam tack, lay a thin bead down into the, the slot. Even though it's a foam glue, the foam tack sticks extremely well to any of the, the carbons, um, plywood. There's many projects around the house that I find myself reaching for the foam tack just because it, it's that versatile. Um, it's a, a good, good glue to have. Um, so the way that it works, again, we, we put the parts together, we bring them apart, just use the knife just to, to pick it up. Put it back down, get that solvent to air out a little bit. Stick it back down in the slot. You can blow some air on it if you were in a little bit of a rush. But you know, it's, I already feel that it, it's starting to, to set up, so this is going to be the, the last Last time we put in there, so we'll make sure it's nice and centered in the slot. Press it, make sure that's all the way down into the slot. And at this point, again, we're gonna wait for that glue to set up. So, you know, five, ten minutes, and, and we'll be able to come back. Now we've given our carbon spar enough time for the glue to cure, so we're ready to put our KF step on top and laminate those two pieces together. Um, like I said earlier, these are mirror image, there's no difference between the two, so this is your opportunity to pick whichever side you'd like to be visible, and once that's done, we're going to apply our foam tack. I was like, I'll, I'll run a bead all the way around the edge, pretty close. Then I'll do a zigzag pattern on the inside. Sure, we get glue all over the place. So we're gonna have a nice strong lamination when we're done. Okay. We've got glue all over that piece. I'm gonna line up all the edges. Note that the slots 
for the servos. Get nice and lined up. Fit is nice. Just like everything with the foam tag. And lift it up. Let it air out a little bit. And since we put a nice thin coat of foam tag, we won't have to, to pick this piece up anymore. So this will be the, the final set down. This is the last opportunity to line it up nice. The edges on both sides line up the leading edge straight. And the nose is nice and straight as well. A little bit of pressure, make sure this nice and evenly tacked down. And we have our nice laminated KF step on our mini manatee wing. Since our main wing assembly is now complete, um, we're going to take our sanding block and we're going to sand or we're going to round off the leading edges of the main wing. That will, will help actually to alleviate a little bit of the, the pitchy tendency that the, the blunt leading edge uh, airframes will have. So this we, we use our drywall sanding block or you can use your, your sandpaper on the, the stick, hand sand it, whatever you're most comfortable with. But it doesn't take much Round the, the edges right over. Almost make it symmetrical if you want, but the airplane will, will fly much, much better with the rounded edges. And it looks nicer too. And we sand both the top and the bottom. Okay. Now our edges look really nice. This is the ideal time that if you're going to decorate your mini manatee with you know, colored packing tape or uh, any other method, use a, a foam safe paint, something like that. Um, this is a great time where all the pieces are flat so they're gonna be easy to, to lay on the table and, and lay out. So we're going to go ahead and put our yellow and black colored packing tape um, we're going to speed this up so uh, we don't waste a lot of your time so you can get back to your build. And uh, we'll catch you back when everything is all colored up and, and looking snazzy.
so there we have it. We've decorated our mini manatee. We've got our yellow and black colored packing tape on the top and the bottom. And on the outer sides of both or vertical stabilizers. So, um, one thing that, that we are recommending that you do, you don't have to if you're really looking to, to save some weight, is since you've got the, the tapes out, um, we're finding that a lot of strength can be gained by putting some clear packing tape um, just on the, the front half of the outer edge of both of the fuselage hats. So we'll do that now. We've got our mirrored sides with our clear packing tape on either edge. That's going to give us a lot of uh, impact resistance. It'll protect our electronics if we were to get struck in the air since this is a, a combat type aircraft. Um, as well as if we fly outside, uh, it will protect from you know, dirt and if we happen to, to hit rocks or something, it'll keep the foam nice and clean. So that is good. Uh, I think that we're ready to install the future laws sides onto the main wing. We note which side the packing tape is on. That's going to be on the outside. You can see with the colored packing tape for the decoration, what I did was I cut that where the fuselage is going to sit. Uh, to get the best bond, you really want a foam to foam bond. So cutting away where the, the tape would have been, where it would have been a tape to foam bond, uh, that's going to give us the, the strongest uh, possible bond that we can get. So, that's why you see that there. Uh, see, I, I cut the tape for the servos and a little bit extra for the tabs so that the glue can uh, attack the foam, stick really well there. So with this, we're going to dry fit, noting the outside. Dry fit into the slots. Make sure everything lines up the way that it should. Note the, the slight curve that we get in the fuselage up about this this part of the, the fuselage um, from here to here. It's about a straight line. So just when you're doing your, your fit into the slots, just be mindful that there is a curve there so you'll have to slightly curve the foam. And you don't have to do anything special, just be mindful when you're installing it into the tabs. So, I mean, that, that really looks nice. It fits really well. So I think we're ready to put some glue on it. So I always like to start in the back, line up the next two tabs, and we'll get the the forwardmost tab. Give it a little, a little jiggle side to side to make sure that it's nice seated well. Make sure the foam gets a, a chance to contact both sides. For this, we're going only going to air the glue out one time. Now this time is the time that counts. We'll make sure that our everything's nice lined up, sitting the way that we want, and we'll be able to let it set to cure. Um, one thing to, to note, be mindful when you're setting the uh, front of the fuselage here, we want the outer edge of the fuselage to match up with the edge of the main wing here. So just when you're gluing that, make sure that those two are flush and you'll be good to go for when we install the firewall. Just 
do the second one here. We'll let the glue cure a couple minutes, and then we'll proceed on to the servo install. We've given our glue plenty of time to set up, so we're going to take our two 3.6 gram servos that are designed specifically to fit into these slots. Uh, we're going to, again, dry fit, make sure that they, they fit in there really nice. Just slide in there without much resistance, but they're going to be a, a nice snug fit. See there? That looks really good. Um, note that both servos have the splines facing towards the rear of the aircraft. Um, that's going to set us up for our control rod length. So now that we know that these fit nice, we can pull them back out of the slots a little bit. Put the glue on, a little bit of glue on the, the side of the servo, either side. What that'll do is when we push the servo down into the slot, that glue will kind of smear and get all on the side, so the servo will not only be held down from just the tabs, but also uh, the sides of the foam where it's in contact. Do that on both servos. Like this one, looks like we put a little bit too much glue. So you, if you see that, you can use your calibrated pinky finger just to, to wipe off any of the excess glue that you don't want to have on the airplane. And since a little bit of glue came up through the, the center of the mounting hole. It almost forms a rivet when the glue dries. So we're going to leave that there because that, that's going to add even more strength to, to keep that servo locked in place. So that we're, we're going to give these plenty of time to dry since now we've got a, a three-dimensional airplane. Uh, the next steps are going to be installing the battery tray in the firewall, which we're going to flip the airplane over. So. Uh, we'll make sure that the glue is plenty dry and then we'll come back to it. So it might be time to, to grab a, a cool drink and get ready for the next steps. So glue is plenty dry on the servos, so it's time to move on to installing the battery tray and the firewall. So the battery tray really is basically just a spacer because the, the servos stick up just a little bit we want to be able to have as much space as, as we can uh, in the battery tray and, and in the fuselage since it is a, a smaller model. So we're going to use this little tray to, uh, to fit in there and space it up so it clears the servo. Um, you'll note the notch in the part that's going to go inside the fuselage with the, the flat edge uh, flush with the leading edge of the, the top wing. And it doesn't matter which side you put the glue on, but again, we'll, we'll do glue around the outside, kind of zigzaggy in the middle. And we'll install that. Okay. 
near the glue. I want to make sure that this is really glued down pretty well because this will be where you put your Velcro that's going to hold the, the battery down. Um, in the kit, we don't include a Velcro because we know at this size, you know, the, you've got a, a different different ways to, to mount the batteries. And we've flown these on the, the 300 milliamp E-Flight type battery that uses the very small Velcro. Um, that, that we have a, a hard time every now and then if we don't get a good solid Velcro connection, the battery will actually come un-Velcroed. So we recommend using a, a large standard kind of Velcro. Um, so uh, but you may choose to use a, a different type, so that's why we leave it up to you. Um, if you really want to add a lot of strength here, you could put some clear packing tape on the, the top surface of the uh, battery tray, but it, it's not necessary that you do that. So while that's drying, that's nice and flush with the front, we can take our firewall that we prepared earlier and just kind of line it up. Note that we've got the the hole, there's a hole and a slot. The hole is going to be where your motor is centered around. The slot is going to be for the, the motor wires to be routed through into the fuselage. So it really is up to you of which side the motor wires go out on, but we can either have the motor wires come out on the left side of the airplane, or we can flip it over and they can come on the right side. Um, either way, is just uh, it's up to you, and that's just going to determine which side of the airplane gets the speed control, which gets the receiver. So we're just going to pick one of them. It looks like it, it lines up. Everything was nice and flush all on the edges. So we'll just go right ahead and and add our foam tack to the, the leading edge of the main wing and the two fuselage sides. There's plenty of glue we're using here since this is going to be uh, a pretty high stress area. Make sure the glue is in contact with everything that it needs to be. air it out a couple times. Make sure we get a good bond, everything's lined up. And then we'll stick it and let it cure. Okay, now we'll let the glue have some time to, to cure, and we'll be back to install the control rods, control horns, and you know we're, we're really nearing the, the finish of this build, so yeah. join us in a, in a moment. So just like in all the steps before, we're going to want to dry fit the parts that are going together. So. We'll gently take the, we only need three out of the four micro control horns that are included. Take those out of their skeleton. If you need, maybe hit it with a little bit of sandpaper, but looks like we don't have to do that. So there's the slots already pre-cut. That's going to be exactly where you want to put them. So we forgot to cut that from when we put the hinge on. So just a little slit with the hobby knife, and we should be good to go. So let's fit in there really nice. You know they're they're cut to fit. You still want to make sure that when the surface is at neutral, the holes in the control horn are directly above the hinge line. That's going to make sure that your the aircraft is performing the way that we designed it to perform. Um, 
So those fit nice. We can take our control rods. You know, we have two shorter ones and one longer one. Take our three micro Z bends. Those will connect to the control horns. We've got our three pieces of straight wire. Those will connect into the micro easy connectors and then be connected to the servo uh, horn. So that's going to give us our complete control system. And we're going to set the length by gluing the carbon rods to the pieces of wire and we'll cover up that connection with some shrink tube. So this is where we need our heat gun. So we'll gather that up. Okay, we got that. Got our servo hardware that came with the servos. And we'll start off by putting the Z bends onto all three of the control horns. So how we do this is we just put a very small dab of glue right on the edge. The carbon. We take our micro Z bend, just kind of swirl it around the carbon rod to smear that glue. We'll wait till it gets tacky a little bit, and probably about halfway down the the control horn, we can let that sit. Um, we could take maybe three quarters of an inch pieces um, and cut the the pieces of shrink tube in thirds. Slide that over, and then we're going to slide it all the way over to the end of the, the carbon rod. Um, that's going to give us a physical you know, bonding of the, the two pieces that are here. Um, if the glue were to fail, the shrink tube would still hold the rod uh, onto the Z-Bend. Um, a real benefit of doing the control rods like this, um, if we find that we need to adjust the length, the foam tack will actually soften with some heat. So you know, we, if we got it all set up and we, we found that we need to lengthen or shorten the rod, we just bring it back, hit it with the heat gun, and then we can uh, adjust the length uh, forward or, or back on the uh, the Z bend. So that's a nice little feature of the foam tack. So we'll do this. Use our heat gun, shrink that up. Now we've got a really nice looking finished linkage end. So we'll do the same with both of the aileron linkages. since the aileron were, linkages we're making a pair of, we want to make sure that they're about the, the same length on, on both sides. So just eyeball. That's close enough because the easy connectors that we have on the other end will allow us to make the, the fine adjustment. Okay, now that we've got the Z-Bends all attached to the carbon rod, we're going to attach the, the straight wires, and that is the same process as we did for the Z's. So 
there's a completed control rod. We'll do the same with the two aileron rods, and then we'll go ahead and install them. control rods complete. We're going to put our easy connectors onto the servo horns. Your servo should have come with a little baggie that has you know, a bunch of different servo horns, a couple screws. We've got the two longer screws that would be used for mounting the servo if we used the screws to do that. So we'll just put those aside because we'll use those uh, when we put the motor on. But save the little teeny tiny screw, that's going to screw the servo horn down onto the servo. So make sure that that's safe. This model, we're going to use the large double control horn, and then that's going to be on the aileron. And then for the elevator, we're going to use the single-sided control horn. So what we need to do is, if we're lucky, the easy connector shaft will fit into the hole of the uh, control horn, but it seems like most cases that doesn't happen. So the easiest way that, that I've found to quickly make the hole larger in the control horn is just take the, the point of your hobby knife and just twirl it back and forth and that will ream the hole out. You want to do this carefully because one, it's, it's sharp, but also it, the plastic's very soft so you can make the hole much too large very quickly. Uh, we're going to pick the second hole from the outside uh, and we're going to enlarge those holes Not quite, so we'll just make it just a little bit bigger. We want the, the fit to be tight, but no slop. We want it to, to be able to go in without too much trouble. Now we can see we've got our control horn with the two easy connectors. Uh, the last part to finish that control horn is to uh, put the little black press-on locks onto the bottom of there. And with that, we're just going to use a, a pair of pliers to, to close that down. First, get it started. The flat side of the lock will go flat up against the bottom of the control horn. So we got it started by hand, and now we just take our pliers and finish the job. So we see that's nice, flush, tight up against the bottom. It gives us a very slop-free connection. We'll do the same on the other side. Maybe if you have really strong thumbs, you can do this by hand, but the, uh, the pliers is the way to go. <laughs> so we'll do the, the same thing on the elevator control horn. Uh, again, second hole from the outside. Uh, enlarge our hole with the, the hobby knife. Check to make sure that it fits. Not 
white, so we'll just make it just a little bit larger. There we go. We'll get our lock started by hand. Sometimes they get a little fiddly. <laughs> there we go. And then we close her up with the pliers. wanted to fight the whole way but we got it so it's fitting nice sitting nice and flush on the bottom of the control horn nice slop free connection we're good to go so this if you have a uh, servo tester or you want to hook up uh, some type of a battery with your radio to center the servos um, this would be a good time to do that uh, we already have done that, so we're just going to install the servo horns on there. The elevator, the aileron servo gets the double horn. The elevator servo gets the single. Note the the side, the side of the elevator that the elevator control uh, horn is on. That's the side that we want the servo horn to be on as well, so that that rod will run straight front to back. So we got those fitting really nice. We can take the hardware that was included, that little tiny screw, and we can tighten the servo horns down onto their servos. These small servos, are, the gears are very small, they're, they're quite fragile. So I recommend that you hold the, the servo horn with your other hand to make sure that by turning the screw, you don't turn the servo. Um, you, turning the servo by hand or with, by screwing it down, you're gonna risk stripping the servo gears and then you're gonna have to do it all over. So a uh, little bit of care with these servos, making sure that you don't move them by hand it is going to increase their, their longevity. Okay. So control the servo horns are securely installed. Um, our control rods are built. It looks like it's time to glue the control horns onto their surfaces and then we'll connect everything all up. It's just like all the other steps in this process, we're going to add a little bit of foam tack to the bottom of the control surface. Install it into the slot. Kind of make sure all the glue gets down into the slot so it's holding on, on the sides. And then we set it for the glue to cure. Again, making sure that the, the holes in the control horn are perfectly in line with the, the plane of the hinge. So.
while we're waiting for the glue to dry on the control horns, uh, this would be a good time that we can get the soldering that we need to do for the motor to the speed control and we can set up the electronics. So we're going to take our, our motor, our receiver, our speed control, get those all out. motor, 6 amp speed control, uh, the included in the kit, the 2 millimeter bullets, the receiver, and that's all in the, the mini electronic completer kit that we offer. So we'll grab our soldering equipment, soldering station, solder, Helping hand really does help, especially with these the small solder joints that we have to put together. Uh, it helps. So make sure that the the aircraft is well away from the hot soldering iron. I don't know about you, but I've had more than my fair share of solder blobs that burn right through the, the foam aircraft. So we don't want that to happen. Uh, we have our heat gun that we're going to use to shrink the the shrink tube down, uh, and that's just off to the side for when we used it earlier. So I think we think our soldering iron is heated up. We will first start off by tinning the ends of the leads. We've got the, the three leads that go to the motor from the speed control and then we have the two leads going to uh, the battery. You may choose to clip your battery lead short um, based on the connector that you're going to choose for your battery. Um, in this model, I'm going to use the JST connector, and we're going to have a, the JST pigtail. Um, so we're going to clip these wires and make them shorter so that we have a, the solder joint in the, the center of the wire. Here's our JST pigtail. That allows us to plug our JST in. So we're just gonna clip these wires too so that we don't have a lot of extra wire inside the fuselage. All the ends will need to be stripped, tinned, and then we'll solder them together. So we'll cut the third piece of shrink tube that we have We'll just take maybe quarter inch pieces and that'll be fine for uh, soldering the pigtail to the battery leads. We want to make sure that we put the shrink tube on before we solder it. I know we've all done that before. Sure that we've got a nice clean solder joint there. You'll find that when the solder joint typically is nice and shiny and it's got a smooth surface, that's going to be a, a nice joint. If it kind of has a, a dull finish, then you, you might want to go back over it, and, yeah, put heat, and maybe add a little bit more solder to uh, to the joint. Not so much that it's it's bulging, but this nice clean solder joint is going to give you the best performance and uh, physical strength. So use the heat gun, shrink that up. Got a nice clean joint there. So now we can solder our bullet connectors to our speed control. Um, I don't know if it's a, a standard 
globally or in the industry, but it always seems like the motors come with the bullets, if they are included with motors, come with the male bullets. The speed control has the female bullets, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take each of the bullets, I'm going to tin the connection side. and then we'll solder a lead into each bullet. I'll be very careful because these gold plated bullets really conduct heat well, so they'll stay hot for quite some time. So with those soldered on, we can cut our shrink tube to cover the, the full bullet so that we don't get any shorting out. Okay, so we've got our nice insulated female bullets. Now we'll work on the males that go on the motor end. Again, it's going to be the same thing. We want to tin the ends of the wires. The solder that they use from the factory is very hard and it's very difficult to, to get a good solder joint. So we want to add a little bit of our, our own solder. We're going to take each of the three male bullets. We're going to put some solder on the inside of the solder cup and then solder them to the ends of each wire. Okay, with our male bullets soldered on, we can then take you know, short pieces of shrink tube. We just want to cover up the, the solder portion. We, we want to leave the, the spring portion of the bullet connector free because that will be what goes into the female portion. there we have it. We have all of our soldered connections finished. We've got our male bullets on our motor, our female bullets on our speed control, and we've soldered the battery connector into the power input side of our speed control. So we can put our soldering stuff off to the side. We don't need that anymore. And by this point, all the glue on the control surfaces should be about done, uh, all cured. So we can bring the airplane back over. We can get going on installing the control rods. So I always like to just take, or just put the control rod up uh, next to the connections that they're going to have just to give us a, a feel for if there's any adjustments that we need to make. So we'll do this for the elevator. That's the, the longest rod. Kind of line it up so that the flat where the Z-bend would go into the holes is just about where it is. And note over on the servo side how much wire is sticking out. We've got about a quarter of an inch, so I'm very happy with that. I don't think we need to uh, lengthen or shorten that wire anymore. So I'm ready to install that. So to install that, we're going to make sure that the screw on top of the uh, easy connector is loose. And 
then we're going to gently put the Z-Bend into one of the holes on the control horn. Um, so I suggest putting in the topmost hole. Um, that's going to give you uh, good performance. It's a, a good combination of control authority as well as not not being completely over the top and having a, a 3D kind of type throw. So now that we've got that installed, we can see we've got control of the horn around the surface. We will very gently flex the, the control surface and get the straight wire lined up with the hole in the easy connector and now we've got it threaded through. Uh, since these are easy to adjust in the field, all we need to do now is just kind of by eye, just make sure that the uh, elevator is level with the main wing, and then we can tighten down the screw that's going to pinch the control rod. Again, be careful with the gears on these servos since they're they're pretty fragile. So always support that when you're using the screwdriver. So that gives us our nice strong connection. There's not no slop in in the connection at all. So that's really good. Looking, I'm very happy with that. So we'll do the same thing. Line up the ailerons. Looks like we've got. You know, an eighth of an inch on on that. Having a little bit less wire sticking out in front of the easy connectors on the ailerons is not a bad thing since that's the front of the airplane. You'll be more likely to be handling it around there. So a little less wire sticking out is good. And since both are the same length, we're good on either side. So we'll loosen up our screws on top, make sure we don't lose them, and we'll install the control rods into the horns using the topmost hole in the control horn. Again, carefully flex the surface downward so that we can get the straight wire into the easy connector. Once we do that, just by hand, tighten it down so it, the surface isn't flopping all around until we can then take our screwdriver and, and cinch it down tight with the surface flat. And repeat on the other side. Okay, now we have all three of our control horns connected, our control surfaces are nice and tight, there's no slop in the connections, so we're almost ready to get this thing up in the air. Um, now we've, we've got that part of the airplane put together, we'll flip it over and we'll start installing our electronics. So since we chose to put the slot on the firewall on this side, that's going to be the side that the speed control will be located on. So for, for ease of repair and maintenance, I always use just regular Velcro to attach the electronics to the inside of the fuselage. So that's what we're going to do here. You may choose to you know, use some other method. So you know, whatever you feel uh, you want to do, you can go with that. Okay, so we have our Velcro. Again, it's one of those standard things that doesn't really matter, but for my airplanes, I always put the soft side of the Velcro on the airplane and the, the hard 
loop side or the, the hook side onto the components that we're putting on. So I'm going to put the hooks onto the back of the speed control. I'm also going to put a piece of the hook onto the back of the receiver. Um, so the receivers that we include in our microelectronics kit as well as any of our um, or the mini electronics kits rather any of our uh, electronic completer kits um, you have the option to put the protective kind of case over it um, in this model oh, we prefer to not put that on there just because it is a very small model and we're trying to save weight wherever we can so the the couple grams that we're gonna save um, you know a couple grams over a few different items that we're saving weight they actually do add up so we do that we'll just apply our velcro to the back side like so before we get it in there we'll just put the bind plug in just to make it easier for when we get everything all put together So we can take our motor in the aircraft and kind of you know, we'll, we'll feed the motor wires through the slot. You may have to do one at a time. It'll fit nicely through the slot and curve the wires if, if you need to so that the motor is just able to fit nice and flat on the firewall. It's going to be a lot easier to put the screws in uh, with the wires and motor out of the way. So what we'll do, we'll take a, a pencil or some other way to mark where the holes are going to be. And we'll get the motor lined up so that the, the shaft is right in the center. We can use that if, if the motor has a shaft sticking out the back, you can look from inside the fuselage and see if it's inside the, the center of that hole. It looks all pretty good for me, so I will put a little mark on each motor mount lug where that hole needs to be. And then I can remove the motor and uh, probably going to use just a, a small drill just to get those holes started so when we're threading the the screws in it's not too difficult So this is a little tiny pin vise that we have that for you know, tasks like this work a lot better than, than your big electric drill. Um, you have a lot more control. So we're just going to take our firewall where the holes that we marked were and just drill the hole. Just get it started. want to give those little screws all the help they can get. We're just going to add just a little teeny drop of foam tech into the holes. Doesn't need to be much. Um, it'll just give the screws a little bit extra something to hold on to. Again, we put the wires through the slot in the firewall. We take the screws that we've saved from our servos. Those will work really nice. We just screw the motor right to the firewall.
Okay. The motor's nice and tight. Locked on the firewall. That's not going to go anywhere. And we can see just by the way that the wires want to, to sit, they're curved, they're nice up against the, the side of the fuselage. So you know, we, we really couldn't ask for, for much nicer uh, fit than that. Um, one thing you may want to do, the way the servo wires come out from the servo, they kind of are pointing towards the front. On these servos, there's just a very small piece of shrink tube that's holding them to the bottom of the, the servo. We're just going to slit that so that we can move the servo wires around and, and get them pointing back towards the back. Uh, again, it's not a necessary piece, but it just helps when you're moving the uh, battery in and out. So now we've got our motor leads coming into the fuselage. We will attach them to our speed control leads and then Velcro the speed control to the side of the fuselage, making sure that we still have enough wire to get out so we can connect our battery. For those of you who have who've built models before with the brushless speed controls, you'll know that it really doesn't matter which lead you connect. So we see the speed control only has red wires where the motor has three different colored wires. Um, the way that the brushless motors work, they are three phase motors. So we're just gonna pick whichever one we want to go together. Um, when we test it to see if the direction is turning in the proper way, um, if it is going the correct direction, we don't have to change it. If it's going in the opposite direction that we want, we'll only change two, we'll pick any two of the three wires and change them. So uh, it's, it's pretty easy and we don't have to worry about polarity on the motor side, so that's good. So with those connected, we can see we have our speed control kind of located about there, our battery lead will be able to come all the way up into the front. I think that's good. So we're going to peel the liner off of the Velcro. And then just simply stick that down to the side of the fuselage. We want to tidy up the wires a little bit once we've determined the direction and that we need to, to have the motor rotating and everything's looking fine. Just a little piece of Blenderm tape, we'll be able to, to tape those wires to the, the side of the fuselage and they'll, they'll be out of the way, we won't have any troubles with that. We've got plenty of room there, our lead going to the receiver, everything really looks good. So now we can take our receiver and kind of mock it up, see you know, where it's going to want to fit. Um, probably right about even with the elevator servo. So since it's a small fuselage, connecting the servo connections before we get it into the airplane is going to be a lot easier. So we just note to see which orientation that we do when we have to connect these two. So I see our ground is the bottom, so we will connect it in that direction. There's our throttle. This is our elevator. And this is going to be our aileron. Got our connections in here like that. Since this is an indoor 
kind of smaller model, you're not going to be getting it really far away. So the two antennas, um, really you can just orient them however it fits best in the model. I'll always just have them pointing back towards the, the back of the airplane. So with it connected, everything all fitting the way that we like it. Feel the backing off the Velcro. And we'll fasten the receiver to the side of the fuselage. rearrange some wires here. You can see our bind plug is, is accessible. We've got our battery plug. Uh, since we're here, we'll put some Velcro. We'll hold the battery down. Now we're looking pretty good. Um, this is going to be your opportunity where we'll bind the radio, we'll check the rotation of the motor, put the prop on it. Um, for the power system that we recommend, um, we're recommending a 5x3 prop. Uh, we found that that gives a good balance of uh, vertical performance as well as speed. Um, we have flown with props as small as a 4.75 by 4.75 um, for outside. That's a, a very fun prop. It's going to give you a lot more speed. Um, but you know, this, we're we're going into the indoor flying season, so you know smaller venue. We're going to really recommend the the 5 by 3. It's got plenty of speed for outside, but it's able to, to slow you down enough to fly in the larger sports kind of bubbles uh, without much trouble. So when we put that on and we'll test and then we'll be back. So we just got finished testing the rotation of the motor. Looks like we got lucky on this shot and it was the motor spun in the proper direction. Uh, even though it's a 50-50 chance it always seems like you get more uh, spinning the, the reverse direction, but like I said, we got lucky this time. So with that finished, we know we don't have to play with the wiring anymore. We've removed the bind plug. If we want, we can clean up the wiring a little bit, but um, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to install the fuselage bottom. Um, that is going to cover up all of the electronics, just going to give us the hole for the battery to, to go in. Just like all the other parts that are tab and slot, we're going to want to test fit them before we get the glue out. Make sure that everything fits nice and snug. There's no areas that we need to uh, sand down a little bit. Uh, looks like as expected. It looks uh, fits perfectly. So we're going to put some foam tack uh, on the area of the fuselage between the tabs. So this section and this section. Good wiggle, get it to seat down nice, flare it out once, and then we'll stick it down. So, one of the nice things about this is while that glue is drying, we can flip the airplane over and we can install the vertical stabilizers and the winglets. So, we've got our vertical stabilizers that are mirror images of each other and our winglets. I like to test fit these things flat, so we'll notice that the winglet, the tab is not in the center. Um, the short side is going to face forward on the winglet 
and it's going to go into the, the center hole. So we're just going to test fit that. Note that when it's installed correctly, the winglet comes right to the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer. If we were to install it backwards, it would hang out in the front and that would look kind of silly. So uh, you'll be able to tell right away if you've got that in the proper direction. That one fits really nice. That one also fits. So we can just set the winglets aside because those will be the last things that we install. Um, now we test fit the vertical stabilizer onto the tabs on the back of the, the main wing. These we want to make sure that they're they're nice and vertical and they don't interfere with any of the control surfaces. Make sure that they, they don't contact the elevator. And it looks like the the fit is gonna be just right. So pull those out, put the glue on it, and then uh, get going. We're going to want to put glue on the forward portion of the vertical stabilizer. No point in putting glue on the back because there's nothing that we're going to glue it to. Stick that there, air it out, and then leave it to dry. Do the same on the other side. Now that I'm looking at this, it looks like I bumped the elevator control horn, so I'm going to have to to adjust that before we get flying, but that's nothing more than uh, making sure that the, the rod is nice and straight, making sure that we've got a, a nice solid connection, and maybe we'll add uh, another kind of a glue fillet just around the, the base here to make sure that that horn stays in place nice and straight. Okay, so the verticals are, are glued on nice. Now, the last thing to do is, is put some glue onto the, the winglet and glue that on. So we'll want to make sure, kind of put it you want the, the winglet to be on the same plane as the main wing, so you may have to, to adjust that a little bit, but looks pretty darn good. Do the other side. That's looking really nice. The only thing that you, actually, you don't have to do anything else. At this point, the airplane is ready to fly. Um, we're recommending, just like we put the clear packing tape on the sides of the fuselage, uh, we're recommending that you, you put it on the bottom as well. It's gonna be a, a high wear area, and uh, this is gonna help protect the model and, and allow it to to stay looking as nice as it can be. So, just take a little piece of that. Get it lined up with the fuselage. the excess. If 
So here we have our completed Songcraft Mini Manatee, ready to fly. Got all. We went through all the assembly of the foam components, our carbon components, set up our electronics. Everything's ready to go. Um, next thing that is left for for the, us to do before we fly it is we're going to want to uh, install our battery of choice. Again, probably a, a 300 to 400 milliamp two cell lipo. Um, and we're going to balance the aircraft. The balance point on this plane um, generally falls right about where the the uh, spar is located. So about an inch to an inch and a half behind the leading edge uh, based on personal preference. But if your balance point is right about where the spar is, you're probably going to be just about good to go. Um, you know, in, in the manual that's included, We've recommended some control throws to start with and some expo settings. Um, this is a, a pretty quick small model, so expo and dual rates definitely uh, can help to, to tame it down a little bit and to, to get it tuned to your liking. So with that, um, be sure to check the channel uh, in the near future. We're going to be doing more build videos. We're going to get our, our micro uh, models all done up with with videos so check that out check www.sawn-craft.com um, we are always trying to run different specials so uh, we we look forward to, to hearing from you and uh, thanks for stopping by